exciting. She can feel it. Oh, that's a good start. Um, he's good. Oh, yeah. A couple of rares. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, that. Uh, I started off. I can't, can't complain. Bob, yeah. you've made more than what the pack's worth. Yo, <laughs> uh, yo, yo, my sovereigns. What up? This is Boba Fett, uncensored on the internet. Thought we'd try something a little different today. Just a bit of pack opening. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, won three packs last season. So I've been itching to open one. I thought I'll, I'll save it for the show. Uh, joining me again tonight for episode 14 tonight, uh, the greatest gentleman who ever lived, Matt Clark. Howdy, howdy. And Gia, I need a, a good intro for you. I mean, like, we've known each other for like forever. <laughs> We're best of friends, but like, I need a good, good intro. You have to work on something so I can bring you in next Listen, week. Shit, don't stick here. <laughs> It just don't, it just does not stick. But yeah, um, hi. How are you all? <laughs> good, good. Um, so Drop Bears, we had Bear on the show last week, leader of the, the Drop Bears. We came second in our very first brawl. And we came first in our second brawl. So yeah, quite, quite, quite happy with Top that. Top effort all round. Well done. Yeah, yeah. So we were, this next one. This next one coming up might be challenging. How so? Up against a dude. Oh, well, there's one guy in there with two mil power, you know? Um, wow. Yeah. This is in your... Are you playing regular Chaos or Gold Chaos? What do you, what do you usually play, Gia? I play just normal Chaos uh, sort of... Yeah, that's what I play. So, because I don't have older cards, uh, I don't do the you know, alphas, betas. Uh, yeah. Any of well, there's only one fray for alpha and beta, and I've, I've done both of those. Um, and yeah. This last one, I had three people saw that they were up against me and just fled. So I had three, <laughs> op three opponent fleds uh, on my last battle. <laughs> Well, they've heard, and they don't. They don't want to be talked about on the show. You see, they don't. They don't want to get to be a battle that you pull it up and then, you know, embarrass them uh, not just the once, but then, you know, anytime anybody watches it, it's it's refresh. It's reopening old wounds. So, no, that's, that's actually it's a viable strategy. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can just keep linking them the the video on. You know, just, yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Anytime they're on Twitter or Twitch or anything, you know, Christmas dinner with the family. Oh. King, here's a link to that uh, to that battle. That and that time you lost. Yeah. It's like the parent um, stories when they've got visitors over, right? Like to tell the stories, all the dumb shit you did when you were a kid. Yeah. How's, well, how's your um, week been, Matt? Yeah, good, good. Uh, in the last brawl, I uh, I waited till pretty much everybody else had picked a fray, and then I got one that was probably not ideally suited to me, but I thought, well, nobody else is going to take it, so I will. But it was a Silver Chaos Legion, and I didn't have really any... I thought, oh, I'm doing okay. I've got a few Chaos Legion summoners and I uh, took the, uh, you know, took the fray. And then when it started, I had a closer look and my <laughs> seal summoners were all uh, level two rares and the, the, the cap for summoners, rare summoners in, in silver is level four. So hmm. um, that w wasn't great. So I quickly bought a level two quicks and because he's legendary, that's the cap for, um, uh, for summoners in there. And probably out of my eight frays, Dragon was available in maybe three of them, so it didn't uh, <clears throat> it didn't go well. I didn't didn't cover the you know cover things in glory, but nobody else had taken that fray, so I can't imagine that, that there were many other better competitors for it. So I'm 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 diving on the grenade of, of waiting till sort of towards the end of the fray selection, so everybody else gets a chance to kind of pick what they're happy with, and then I'll be the guy who comes along and just takes whatever's left and does the best he can. But uh, um, I mean, we all split the rewards equally anyway, and I've probably got broader <laughs> shoulders to take any any criticism that might flow through. So, you know, um, you just do your best, right? Yeah. And with the A and Bs, we're in like the tier one brawls that we're in, it's novice level cap. So it's like my yeah. Cerberus doesn't heal, my Spineback Turtle doesn't have horns. <laughs> it's like, it's a totally different game. It's a totally different game. It's like playing in a glorified bronze again, but now you're only up. You're, you're up against gladiator cards who just destroy. 
Yeah. And at least Demolition. when you're playing in bronze, you're up against other bronze players. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in the brawls, you know, you're up against, you could be up against anyone, you know? Yeah. So, true. yeah. Yeah. And yeah, those what... gladiators are a game changer, right? So when you, as you guys get them, you know, uh, how many merits do you have? Do you, do you know offhand how many merits you have after two brawls? I'm guessing no. like five, six hundred maybe. You wouldn't have enough to buy a pack yet, I wouldn't think. Although you came first, that would have been that would have been a decent amount of merits, I would think, each. You can check um, in, the, in the shop. Hey, can you go. check on, on that, Gio, see uh, what we got there? But how does that work then with the... the, the who, does the guild own the cards or does the person... No, you, so the player owns the cards. So if you left the guild and moved to another one, it would still those cards would still be on your account. You can't sell them or lease them to anybody, um, but they count towards your... Well, don't quote me on this. I think they count towards your collection power. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. Out towards your collection power, and uh, there's an excellent chance they'll be usable on land as well. So, those gladiators are definitely worth stacking, um, but you can't, um, yeah, you can't transfer them. They're, they're, they're locked to your account. So the only way you could, if you really wanted to, you could sell your account, but that's pretty much, it's pretty much your only option um, yeah. for, for getting. Or, or you can you can burn them for dark energy crystals, but that's rarely, yeah. um, rarely a good idea. I think that that might even be for some people a source of income when they've got a card that's already at max and they get that same gladiator, then that's an instant burn, right? Because there's literally nothing that account can do with that card um, for, you know, till the end of time because you, you, you can't do anything else with it. You've, you've already got one at max. So that'd be interesting. Um, uh, Cryptomancer actually once said that he'd crunched the numbers and it was possible that a guild at max level performing very, very well with all of the building upgrades could theoretically pull down 50,000 merits each per brawl, which is 25 gladiator packs. So at the moment, it's a slow grind. I'm only on tier two and I've been battling for a lot longer than you guys have. Um, and I'll still only pull a gladiator pack every couple of brawls. You know, I'll be lucky sometimes. We'll get a 2,000 merits each um, and, and be able to buy a pack per brawl. But you need to do quite well, uh, you know, in the, in the brawl to, to do that. So mm. what happens is, the, the way the rewards break down is the based on how you did, you win your guild wins a certain number of credit uh, crowns and you win a certain number of merits and you decide how you spend your merits and you can, there's, there's, you know, as you unlock things, you get the bloodstone. I can't remember what the other one is, but they're, they're like the potions that give you a higher chance of getting uh, legendaries and, um, and gold foils. Um, but um, the, the guild leader spends the, the crowns on building upgrades and you right. need dark energy crystals as well. Normally the, normally the guild will pass the hat around for that, but yep. the, uh, deck and crowns give you buildings upgrades and then merits give individual person uh, of players um, that uh, merits aren't transferable either. So you can't sort of share merits around with each other. That's a, a, a personal uh, account locked uh, currency as are the gladius cases, as are the gladiators that come out of them. Um, so what, what do you buy? What do you buy the gladiators with? Crowns and merits or just merits? Uh, just, just merits. So right. Permanent building upgrades are with crowns. So every crown, I guess, you can't lose crowns or spend them unwisely, right? They, they can, once they've been used as a building upgrade, then you've permanently got that upgrade. Whereas the merits, you could buy a gladius pack and maybe not open it and it's just, it, it's not doing you any good, right? So merits are individual currency that you yourself decide how you spend and grounds are for the, you know, the, what the guild leader spends for the, the on outputting guild buildings. So it's good that there's a, there's a group reward and also an individual reward. I like it a lot. Mm, yes. um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> they completely change the gameplay gladiators. They really do. Uh, if you, and, and look, some rule sets, they don't at all back to basics. They don't have bloodlust anymore. So they're just another card. Uh, but other other rule sets, they are massively powerful, and they you know you'll win or lose based almost entirely on your on your gladiator. So, interestingly, there are people who are stacking, and I spoke with Byzantinist about this. There are people who are just stacking their merits and not spending them yet. They're waiting until their guild buildings have improved enough that they can get the Bloodstone and the other one. I should know what that one's called. Power Stone unlocked. Power Stone, right? Before so they open they the can, pack. That's right. So they can actually buy those things before they buy and open the Gladius cases. So um, some of the higher tier, you know, tier three um, uh, guilds that are really at the top level, 
you go up against them and they're not actually fielding any gladiators because they've yet to open the gladius pack, but they're sitting on, you know, 30, 40,000 merits. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Good yeah. on them. Speaking yeah. of the uh, rule sets, I had a, um, a quest battle the other day. It was, um, I should have kept this one for our analysis, but it, I wouldn't have, it'd be so far back now to find, but it was m melee only and back to basics. So no reach, no sneak. So literally it's just each battle was an individual round. Um, and I thought that was, that was like different. When I saw the rule set, I thought, wow, it's just going to be each melee card in turn. You know, it was yeah, like. You really just want speed for that. But also <laughs> there are, there are melee cards that have different damage attack types as well. You know, Village, Vigilator has ranged. Red Dragon has, you know, fire. Uh, Warchang has ranged. Uh, there's there's quite a few cards out there that are double attack types and you can sneak them into your team because they're melee cards but you sit them right at the back and they're doing magic magic damage yeah. each round or rage dam range damage each round as well yeah um so yeah yeah and that's an unfair advantage if you happen to have those cards <laughs> yeah i've got <laughs> a one level one <laughs> war chang that's the only one yeah. that has ranged and melee yeah, yeah but if you park him at the back it's amazing what a difference he's going to make to the match because if you put somebody fast up the front and their first card just can't hit him, then your war chank's just going bang, 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 bang. That's all that's happening, right? Bang and a miss, bang and a miss. So, yeah. Um, I never I, even I thought like of that. that. Never even yeah. thought of that at the time. Yeah. This is why we have. This is why we have you on the show, man. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. I, look, I, most of these aren't my strategies. They're something I've been beaten with. Then I go, what? How? how oh. Yeah, all right. And I just, I've, I don't have a great strategic mind, but I've been beaten 16,000 times, I think, I looked up last time. So that, you know, you just need a good memory. You don't need to be a good strategist. <laughs> okay, what killed me last time this rule set came up? Yeah. That sounds, if you look at my win ratio, um, you can see that my skill set is persistence. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was about to say with the... Uh to remember stuff. That's like as much as you need to get through the schooling system. That's all you need. You just, honestly, you just need to remember things and you'll be great. You'll be good to go. Yeah. And it's a skill set. Honestly, memory is such a skill set. Mm. Sometimes I forget the rule set halfway through picking my cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, first, I like, got Earthquake. First one's got wings, but now I start thinking strategy. And then by the time I laid my cards out, it's like, oh, it's Earthquake. I forgot. Yeah, I've got one wing at <laughs> the front or something like that. 100% uh, with you, man. And on the Gladiator uh, store, as you pointed out, because I didn't even know where to find merits to begin with, but under store, uh, I got 923, and I assume people uh, like... Yeah, you all would. Every member, who, every member who participated in both of your brawls will have the same 903. Yeah. So you're almost halfway to... If you can, well, I was going to say you can't really do much better than first. Um, <laughs> if you can keep doing well, you'll be, you'll be able to get Gladius packs. Maybe you can hang on to that and maybe can you screen share? Uh, maybe we can all watch you open your first Gladius pack. Yeah. 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 Now? You too, Bob? Not now because you don't have We, we don't it. have them. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> so is it 2K? 2K merits to open one Gladius pack. 2,000 merits to open one Gladius pack. And it has five cards in there. Same rules, at least one's rare. But. I tell you, when you're opening normal packs, you'll go, oh, yeah, I've got yeah, I've got some of him. I've got some of him. Yeah, that's great. When you open Gladius packs, I know how many of a lot of my favorite cards I already have, and I am desperately hoping for just one more because I can't buy it. Right? You know, you guys are like, oh, get a, get a Chaos Agent. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Click, 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 and I'm <laughs> yeah. a Chaos. You can't do that, right? You literally, you've just got to wait until you get one in a pack, and you can't just go and buy more merits. You've got to wait until you win them. Um, and so when you actually get that card that you've been waiting for, that you can now combine and get to the next level and unlock the next ability on your favorite gladiator, and you can't buy that, and you know that some schmuck is going to discover the game <laughs> six months from now, can't just buy his way to get one, right? This is you know, it's blood, sweat, and tears. That's the only way to get it. Oh, it's just delicious. It's lovely. So, yeah, about I, a, yeah, I want you guys to, to when, you, when, when the drop bears have enough merits, then I, I want to see that happen on stream. Yeah, well, so everyone gets the same merits, do they, at the end of each brawl in the guild? 
yeah, everyone who participated and submitted at least, I think, uh, ninety percent of your battles or eighty percent of your battles. Like if you fled half of them, yeah, I think you get you get frozen out of the reward. Oh, we don't flee. We're the drop bears. We we cause the oh, flee. Absolutely. Yeah. I Ooh. actually fled my very first battle. <laughs> you did, didn't you? <laughs> the timer. <laughs> yeah, I just the timer went down and I just woke up and yeah, I had no time. I mean, so I think. You know, I thought I just woke up, right? I was tired, and yeah. time slipped me by. You know, even with normal games, it's like once the timer reaches fifteen seconds, my brain leaves the building, and <laughs> yeah. every card after that is just wherever the mouse is. It's just it's <laughs> random. It's just <laughs> random from that point. It's more arithmetic than strategy. Yeah. You know, that's seven left, and a, there's a three and a four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. 15 seconds. Yeah. I'd rather just dump a shit card than, than miss out yeah. on the timer, you know? I couldn't even calculate that at the time. I couldn't yeah. even, like, choose cards. I was like, what numbers? How do I... What adds up to be 17? You know? Did you wake up from Math. a nightmare that you've forgotten to submit for the role? Possibly. And I did not put that background on. And right now. It looks pretty groovy. I was just about to say what it, like... It just popped up. I, I don't yeah. know what to do. It's virtual <laughs> backgrounds. And under where it says video recording or something, you've got choose virtual background. Video video settings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks okay, yeah, though. I mean, it looks pretty... It, it gives you, you that an, angelic sort of look. I was going to say, right. did you die and you've gone to heaven? Because <laughs> that's a commitment <laughs> to, the, to the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here first. Life after death. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, if we're all getting the same pretty amount. Nice up here. <laughs> pretty if nice we're getting the same amount here. of merits, yeah. that means, Geo, you and I will both get our first gladiuses at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. that will have a double. Yep, double whammy. Yeah. And this well, time, can... I'll open it when you're recording. <laughs> <laughs> I can save, hang on, I can save up too. I can, if you, if you guys don't mind having a. Having a twenties in we, the, we uh, like huh. a we love the trisome. Yeah, love it. Oh, so I've got enough now. I could do it now. I won't. Oh, hang on, wait for you guys. Yeah. All right. I'll so in, in one I'll show, go. we'll have three gladius pack openings. Nice. Cool. All right. Araki. So you got any takeaways for us this week, Gio? Um, in your heavenly I've boat there, looking a... down on us. Oh well. You, you see, no, I've, I've had a real busy week, to be honest. I haven't had much time to, like, just lose myself in spins as much as I'd like. Uh, so I haven't picked up on anything new, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so right now it's just like, yeah, it's just talking to you guys and having fun. And, yeah, Dan. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 there will be a time I'll be here to explain something new that I... <laughs> figured out but for now no yeah no. all right how about yourself bob um yeah i've just been like the, the after the first brawl was just like having no idea what to expect the second one was kind of like meh <laughs> yeah it's just like okay i've got 30 hours to do this and because last on the first one like i think three of my opponents waited till like the last hour to, it's mm -hmm. like oh, it was my first one so I wanted to see what happens you know um, so this time like the second one I did that <laughs> I waited until like the, the last minute before doing that but yeah it was it wasn't like I must say the first one it was like it was stressful purely because of the unknown for no other reason and now it's, and it's want... in the fun category you don't want to let your guild mates down either, right? And it's okay if you lose, like, as long as you put your best foot forward and you lose. I mean, that's mm. going to happen to all of us. But um, if, you've, if you've done the right thing and you've been there and you've submitted and, yeah. And we've got a rule in the Roaring Twenties where if you forget to submit your teams for the brawl, then you just don't enter the next one. Okay, um, yeah. That's been tweaked a little bit because sometimes, sometimes we don't have anyone for the last fray. So it's been tweaked. If you don't play in the next one unless there's an open fray with an hour, hour or less to go. And then you yeah. can dive in that one. So, you know, because otherwise that would go, that would go empty. But I think, you know, things do come up, but if, uh, yeah, if the worst case scenario happens and you do put your hand up to battle, right? It's not just 
because you're a member of the guild. You specifically said, "I'm going to I'm going to fight this fray." Um, if you can't do it, then then yeah, you just kind of sit out to the next one. So yeah. but it's not a problem for you guys, at least not yet, because you're all cohesive and pulling together as a team and not strangers spread out all over the planet. You kind of yeah. know each other a bit better, and that make that does make a difference. So, yeah, fantastic start to the drop bears. Yeah, thank you. Well thank you yeah, there was um, like you know, second for the first time. And it's like, wow, you know, can we do that again? And then first, like, and I didn't even, it was, I logged in in the morning and Bear had already put in our Discord server. But we won, we won. But, yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So should we have a look at the battle? Oh, yeah, that. Let's do it. All right, right, who's first? Who's first? That. Matt. Matt? Yeah, I was, yeah. was going to vote Matt too. All right, so one sec, let's... Uh, Pull up a battle from Matt. All right, so go, Matt. <laughs> All right, so this is this is a, an alpha tournament that I'm in at the moment, Gold League, and I think it's quite interesting because it is uh, in rage and it is melee mayhem. So how are players who are um, limited to a fairly high mana cap for alpha only? Like you, you basically you can bring in the highest, um, heaviest hitters in the game, but also uh, Enrage and I don't think Melee Mayhem were even around uh, when Alphas were the only available. I'm not even sure when rule sets rolled out. So when Alphas were, were the only ones available. So this actually looks a lot different. A lot of people who've you know, played the game might have seen these cards individually, you know, newer players, but they're actually seeing them all together and thinking, oh, I would have done this, I would have done that. It is so limiting to have alpha only when you're used to more of a free-for-all. So you can't do things like um, um, uh, triple sneak, right? It's just not available. You can't even do double sneak. Each splinter has one sneak card. And if you want to oh, really? Them, yeah. Never noticed that. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just, it, you know, so I think the trick with alpha is to put yourself in a different mindset consider it a different game and i think um yeah i think here looking at this it almost feels like this player is used to playing non-alpha and and they're not in an alpha headspace and i know that sounds funny like how can you imagine what headspace they're in but using the, as soon as i saw the gold dragon in second position I thought that is going to get eaten alive by melee attackers and he does too much damage to justify putting him in second, right? You'd want to put him right at the back. I get why you'd put him in second because in regular play, you put a heavy hitting flying guy like that in last position, a sandworm is going to snatch him out of the sky, right? Boom, yeah. And so instead of that, my opponent here has put a self-healer up in last position, expecting to get, assumedly expecting to get, uh, you know, some sort of a, um, a sneak attack. Sneak. But because it's melee mayhem, and because all this damage is just going to be happening right forward, I wasn't interested in any sneak. I mean, you could only do one anyway, so obviously here it would have been, um, and, and this is where he's put, you know, self-healer there as insurance, right? It doesn't matter what I would try to do to kill that card, I wouldn't be able to do it, because I can only literally have one sneak. Um, so I can see why he's put that card there, but I also know that um, he's the positioning of his gold dragon. I think is is uh, problematic for him here. So, does anyone have any predictions on how they think it'll go? Um, actually, just a, a, a question on that. Like when you have the melee rule set, do you generally go heavy in melee, or do you still balance? It's it's hard again because. Um, there aren't that many cards that that will retaliate against melee. Yeah. So I went for I went for the thorns here on the spineback turtle because yeah. I wanted to hurt him a bit, right? Um, I knew that somewhere he would be attacking with um, uh, with uh, melee melee cards somewhere, but I I like to mix it up a bit in melee mayhem because if they stack, and again, you know, he could have gone in in regular. He could have gone with, say, a triple demoralize, which we were talking about the other week, right? You know, oh look, this is this is uh, going to be vicious and brutal, and he's going to stack up on on melee. 
So I'm going to do a triple demoralized team, but there's you, there's not even a single demoralize in yeah. um, you know there's um, uh, you could take death splinter and Zintar Mortalis does demoralize, but it wasn't added as a card ability until you know whenever is and death's not even an option in here. So the, it is really limiting, but it's also freeing in that you know that there are things that you won't come up against. So in in here, my thinking was. The gold dragon is because of the high mana cap and because everything's going forward and because you can only do single sneak, I wasn't too worried about um, having that gold dragon taken out. Right? And his firepower is the joy of it all. Normally, you'd have to worry about a double magic reflect really hurting, right? With, with a whole lot of tank heals behind. But again, that limitation is not there in alpha. There's just, you can't, you can't build double magic reflect teams because i think i think you have to quote me if i'm wrong but i think each team each splinter again only has a single magic reflect card so in this case it'd be the frozen soldier which neither of us played um the uh, the gold dragon itself has magic reflect so if i mean i would have been in trouble here if this was a regular play and he had say uh, a magic reflect in first and a magic reflect in third but just the one there by himself, especially within rage, and especially this close to the front of the of the pack. Um, it's yeah. I, I, as soon as I saw that gold dragon there, I thought, no, he's too squishy to have all that firepower that close to the front. And I, that's that's why I felt confident before this battle started. Now, right. sometimes I lead you astray. Sometimes I don't. Do you have any any predictions, Bob? You want to go first? Yeah. Uh, first, just one more question there. What, why did you go with Selenia? Um, plus one ranged, and you're only, only playing one ranged card, because at least you know, he's, he's stacked up on ranged with his Selenia. Geo, you want to crack? Can you answer that one? <sighs> Not really. Uh, this is, like, foreign to me. However, I like what you said to begin with, with that dragon. Uh, he should have just left it in the back, because it has heal. You want it to last as long as possible, you know, when it actually comes to that point if they were to wipe you out now you got two heals and there's one that, you know that's throwing power to the uh, you know trying to take out the one that's last left yeah. and it's got um spark spark is it um blast what it's called. blast spark yeah it's got blast and now you're going to do extra damage because you've left yours at the very back Exactly. And that, that was I just my think... thinking, too. and I wasn't wasn't worried about double magic reflect or triple magic no. reflect or whatever else. The the um, yeah, I, yeah. So the the reason and and thank you for that. The reason that I went with Selenia Sky is that only three of these cards, and the reason he did too, I imagine, only three of my cards mm -hmm. are water cards. The other three are dragon cards, and Selenia Sky is the mm -hmm. only alpha dragon summoner. So you want dragon yeah, cards, then you've got to do it. So anything anything above makes sense, you know, yeah. 35, yeah. 40 mana, you're going to want dragon cards and you're going to use Selenia Sky. So she's not there for the plus one to ranged. She's mm. literally just there for uh, to bring in the dragon cards. So. Yeah. Um, any predictions on where we're going with this? I'm just looking at the ranged. Like, it's got hard hitting with the ranged in the back and oh, despite as a self-heal um, and speed. So just on range and speed alone, uh, they've got advantage over you. But at the same time, there's so many buffs on each of those cards that, yeah, like, as Gio would say, that's above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> but my initial reaction would, would be with the combination of, of high hitting range plus one from Selenia, um, and the speed, I, I think the opponent has the advantage there. Yep, that's a, that's a good call. Um, one other thing I'd point out is my Naga Warrior that I have and he doesn't already has Enrage. So the fact that I brought her in on this rule set means that I've, I've wasted that, you know, so, so to speak. Yeah. She, any card would have got Enrage. So that's not of yep. any benefit to her. Geo, what are you, what are you thinking? Where are your thoughts? Oh, man. Uh, okay, so he's got that Crustacean King or that thing that gives everyone armor. Well, you yep. just happen and to have kill. piercing. Yeah, and piercing. Yeah, and tank heal. But you, you have piercing, right? Although his front lineup has shield. Um, yeah, uh, whatever it's called. Is it shield? Where it takes away melee damage by one? Yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
So it's a bit tricky, but you do have Retaliate, which I don't know how often that's going to go off in this battle. Uh, you got stun. He has stun. Man, it's like a, it's almost like this is a this is a classic example as close as two as you can get to, a, you know, to the same match. It's like yeah, and and alpha alpha matches will often come down to this because uh, there's limits one, of cards. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, and you know when when the mana caps get get big enough, then you get a both pick Selenius guy, for example, and yeah. that I find is really fascinating because then you're more playing what you guess he's going to play. Rather than just going, oh, there could be millions of things he might play and just guessing and taking a stab. With this, you're very confident on what he's going to do, but you know that he's very confident on what you're going to do as well. So so it's uh, all lineup then? Position? Kind of, yeah. Really? I've, yeah, 90% of the time you'll, you'll, you'll find that it's, it's, it's just a case of one card or another. You know, your second and third cards are, are the opposite way around. And that, that obviously can be the difference. So, all right, did you want to, did you want to give it yeah, a crack and we'll, we'll have a play? Let's roll. Anyone playing Rumble. a long time, I think, has had long enough to... One thing I would say is um, those Frost Giants are slow, but they also do slow. So when I kill yeah. his Frost Giant, my whole team will speed up, but my Frost Giant will still be slowing his team down. I forgot about Enraged. Yep. Boom. Yeah, okay. So now I'm... See that miss there? Because mm. I'm that little bit faster than him. Yeah. That stun hurt, I'll be honest with you. And now he yeah. speeds up because my Frost Giant's dead. Because your Frost Giant's gone, yeah. Yep. Mm. There's Retaliate. And Blast. Retaliate and Blast. Yeah. And I miss that safe. That was a good save. Oh. Yeah. Done. But now, now you see, you know, my gold dragon is just up here, just hollowing him out, right? Yeah. He just doesn't have the firepower left now yeah. to to chop through. That miss helped, obviously. But yeah. I mean, you know, once that Luck. once his lightning dragon's gone, there's nothing he yeah. can do. Yeah, yeah, and he can't attack from first position, so he's, yeah. all he can do is heal. Yeah. yeah, and that you know, part of that is wanting to maximize the benefit of Selenius Sky. And, yep, great, mm. but um, that's another card that you can't bring in, right? And and mm. just the the damage that my Naga Warrior did, knowing that she was going to be in a melee mayhem where, you know, when she gets, you know, she's doing a lot of damage when she hits, um, and when she gets to the front, <laughs> she's going to be doing some retaliating. That mm. had more of an impact on the outcome of the game than, than his uh, Water Elemental, um, just lobbing those shots in from, you know, from long range. So, but that, you know, that... Maybe could have gone either way, but I just thought um, it, it was worth looking at an alpha match just to see the, I guess, the differences and the limitations because you can't go, I'm going to do a triple snipe team. Just not. Yeah, happen, and right? I didn't even know like that, like you said, like one sneak per splinter, stuff like that. So, so and I'm, while know. I'm playing in A's and B's, you know, <laughs> little, some, the little bits and things like that are going to gonna help me because that, that's my fray in the guild because I'm. Yeah. There are myself with any ones that have enough A and Bs to do that fray. One thing to note, gladiator cards can increase that, right? So you could have a, you know, goblin sorcerer plus, um, you know, I think there's a couple of different earth sneak uh, cards that are gladiators. You can only have one so gladiator it, in a game though, can't that's you? Right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. But that does mean that you could do a double snipe or a double sneak or a double blast team or, yeah. you know, the, the double heal. Um, so the gladiators do tweak that somewhat. This this is just from, from an alpha only tournament, so there's no no gladiators in it. All right. So and Gio, you've you've got a battle to share with us as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sure so do. let's yeah. load that one up. All right. Okay. What's going on here? This is literally a mirror match. Me and my opponent both thought the same thing. We have shield or the armor with two. Uh, two plus armor on everyone, on every card, on every character, and all melee can attack from any position. So we thought of the same thing. So we have uh, the, uh, the um, what's his face? We have rats, we have exploding <laughs> dwarf. <laughs> we got, it, it's nearly the same. We have um, the forgotten one. First place, 
And the only difference is uh, he's decided to go with um, the epic cannon dude. I can't believe I forgot his name. But anyway, Lava Launcher. Card. Lava Launcher, close range. It has stun. So that that's uh, pretty cool. And then he's got that, you know, opportunist dude. So he'll go for the weaker ones. Yeah, whatever. So that would be my um, exploding dwarf and my rats. But then I have uh, the dude who has slow and cleanse, which cleanse does absolutely nothing for me. But I chose him for the slow and his speed. And I put him in second position, hoping that the uh, two speed. in the middle. Yeah. Hoping that two in the middle would survive long enough to attack whatever they could on my opponent's side, you know? And uh, yeah, the last card was just a snipe. I like him. He's, uh, I forget his name again. I'm just going to call him Spider Dude. He's got poison, which in this matchup didn't really uh, count for anything. So it was a close match. I'll just put, I'll just say that. All right. Yeah, I actually got another lava launcher in uh, my quest chest today. And I was curious why you put Scavo there in second pos second position of all places. Mm. Um, the only thing he's got going for him there really is, is speed. So if once he moves to the first position, he, he might miss a lot. But yes. Um, I have PTSD over sneak. I'm so afraid of sneak. I, I get, I, I've said this before, like, yeah, uh, sneak. Hmm. All right. I, what, what I should have done, you see that guy, the second last position? Maybe I should have uh, switched Scavo and him in the places because he's got close range and he has demoralized and he has weakened. So minus one health. I think he played a big enough role, to be honest. Uh, and to he can take away. He can range from first position too, so... Yeah. yeah. I think he negated Tars's plus one melee, as well, which he did. So I think that was important. And yeah, so if you... We'll start it. And uh, Matt, actually, I'd like yeah. to get your... Yeah. Yeah, all good. It is funny to put a cleanse support card bin a tank with a melee. <laughs> it's like the... <laughs> I don't need to be cleansed um, oh, and yeah. uh, everything. Uh, I think your thorns on your front guy is going to help a lot because he's going to obviously attract a lot of melee attention and your demoralized guy that you mentioned, I don't know the names of a lot of these CL or fire Same. guards, but uh, your, your demoralized guy means that they're going to hit and cop those thorns and do less damage, right? So you're going to hit, you're not going to cop the thorns and thorns? you're going to hit. Yeah. So you, is that thorns there or am I, piercing? oh, it's retaliate. Oh, retaliate. retaliate. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I'm, and I'm, piercing. Yeah. Thorns. Yeah. Which he um, hasn't got. Yeah, so he has retaliate, but you have retaliate and piercing. Sorry, I've got, mm. um, I'm on my mobile and it's a little bit small for these old eyes. Uh, yeah, so I, I think demoralizer is going to make a massive difference. Um, I think you're both wise to bring in the exploding rats. Um, mm. I would have swapped your exploding rats and your exploding dwarf just because your dwarf is so much more firepower and I would have been worried about an opportunist like what he played there. So mm. the upside might be that he might hit your dwarf who then retaliates and does a whole lot of damage to their back row, yeah. which would make me very happy. Yeah. You're right. That's scary with Blast, isn't it? Having them so close together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With opportunity, because, especially by that dude. Because he has, he's right in the middle. So if he brings it home, if he brings that damage home yeah. by getting retaliated against... The guys either side of him are going to get wrecked because you have Pierce. I don't think that's going to happen simply because you said that it's a close match, but um, that's definitely a, a danger that he faced. I wouldn't risk it personally. I would rather have the exploding rats up first so that of my two health cards, my exploding dwarf is the second one and will survive an attack by opportunists that little bit longer while living a bit longer to deal out the damage. He's a glass cannon. You really don't want him attacked unless it's absolutely necessary. And, you know, it, it's a coin toss on whether he retaliates or not anyway. So, yeah. 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 I would have liked to see that, but I don't think that will happen simply because you said it was. A, and if that happened, it would not be what you'd call a close a close battle. But, yeah, let's see what happened. Yeah, he's got a, like, legendary two epics and a rare. Um, Geo's got the advantage, though, like, his, his cards are further maxed. So, but I'm just going to say that Geo got, 
Gio's got this um, because I don't think Gio would share a game that he lost. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, in All this right. case, yes. All right, let's check it. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. It's just tapping back. It's like, damn. Yeah, so that, that yeah. Yeah. Didn't retaliate. Nah. Look at that. He, he takes me out. Yeah. It's, it's I'd be getting worried at this point, to be honest. Yeah, I, I was. I was, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. But you'll know who saves the day in the end, which card really yeah. won me. Oh, well, that, that rat's redemption. redemption. That's stripping off a bit of armor. That's nice. Who's got more hit points now? Yeah, yeah, you buy a long yeah. shot. Yeah. It's actually that card. That that card, that very card, dude, um, saved me. Yeah. Yeah, that's Molten that's Ash good. Golem. There's, there's another. Molten Ash Golem on Max D Mount. Yeah, there is another card that does demoralize, but he's melee, and I'm like, I don't want to risk him, um, you know, in using his melee attack when he's doing such a good job of minimizing their melee attack. But you know, that guy, he's ranged, so you can keep him safe. He's doing the damage output and yeah. doing demoralize. He's a really good option. Yeah, that's uh, that was a good match, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. That dash golem could have gone either way so many beast. times. Yeah, your yeah. Uh, his his tank I think retaliated against your uh, exploding dwarf, but yeah. missed. Mm. But had he even hit, and then the dwarf retaliated, that would have changed things again. So, mm. um, yeah, so much of that is uh, is, is chance. It, yeah, and it's either or either man. We we really did have a lot of the same sort of ideas. Yeah, we we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even like I come across that especially in with death. Like um and you know, especially now after chaos, like there's so many options available, but mm. this I keep seeing the same like there's a death hand that seems to be very popular at the moment. I keep keep seeing a lot of that up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, disintegrator is the card I was thinking of. He's a neutral chaos legion and he's got the um um retaliate uh, that, that demoralize that I was talking about. Yes, you know, because does. it really it does a it does a beautiful job demoralize, but I would only play him in like a melee mayhem or super sneak or something where he's yeah. still attacking from anywhere, but he can you can keep him alive that bit extra. And then of course yeah. demoralize is more valuable too, because you're more confident that they're going to be ringing in melee. Yeah. Um, but that's a that's a good I have to have a look at that card because that um he, he really won that battle for you. Well you know what, yeah. Even though you can choose melee to attack anywhere, it doesn't have to be the case. I've been wrecked by people with that same matchup, with people who've chosen like, uh, like water, right? With like Alric, and they've de they've destroyed me with magic. Yeah. You know, like because you're not me. expecting it. You're not you're not yeah. putting reflectors in there. You're not putting void in there. So here yeah. I am. I got armor. That's just it being like it's nothing to magic. Nothing. Yeah. When I come to melee mayhem now i i tend to do that myself mm. um because i'm thinking they're going to be heavily stacked with yeah melee they're probably going to have lots of shields um armor so yeah i usually magic's my go-to pretty much for, oh, for melee mayhem yeah. <laughs> the only the only problem that you have with magic is it tends to be a bit slower than melee so if yeah. they if, i mean if you play a lot of uh, magic and it's a melee mayhem match you need to absolutely work that demoralize and you need to like make sure that you're minimizing their, their damage that's coming in and you need to either be fast or very, very heavily, heavily armored up the front because yep. if they can crack on through with three or four of their cards and wreck you before you get a shot off, it doesn't matter how much, how much theoretical magic damage you could have done in yep. round two if you've got three cards left at the start yep. of round two. So that's need where that. Crustacean King. Yeah, 13. big tank at the front. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, he's nice. But if, if you've got a heavy hitter with Pierce who cuts right through your tank, yeah. right, and maybe he's got trample, maybe he's got, something, you know, like an exploding dwarf, yeah, then dwarf. it, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you would have done when you were, you know, when, when you got around to having a turn. 
if there's just a couple of twitching courses <laughs> left on your team when that actually happens. And that's one of the dangers of melee mayhem mm. is melee cards are so quick. They really, mm. they, they can be so much quicker uh, than magic. And so, yeah, it's just, just something to throw out there. Um, yeah. it, it works. It will, a heavy magic team will only work if the opponent is completely committed to the assumption that you're going to go melee and they've yep. got no defences against magic whatsoever, and you yourself have made sure that you can survive that first round of, of melee attacks from them, yep. which will no doubt hit, hit earlier. Yep. I like that Molten Ash Golem, though. I'm going to get one of them. <laughs> I'm talking to you guys. You said no more cards. You said no, no more cards. Because I'll compare the prices, and then I'll go, oh, actually, I may as well get him in gold because he's that good, and I'm going to pay him all the time. And then before you know it, I'm, yeah, okay. Anyway, it's, yeah. It's, I'll talk to you next week and go, Hey, remember last week? Well, yeah, so next, next, next episode, that will be recording from a caravan, and then the episode after that will be in a tent. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I've actually got a couple of games I want to share for, for, yeah, two, different, for two different reasons. Um, I'll just load up this first one. Okay, so this was... Base, well, actually, before I even give you my thinking, um, what do you guys think? What's going on here? I think you're a shoe in for the win because you've got higher level cards, but you're also doing magic that he's completely unprepared for. I expect that he's going to do you some damage early on and fast but it won't be sufficient to uh, really minimise the amount of damage that you're doing to him. I think your, just your two magic cards right there and your armour that the uh, Wavesmith is giving you is going gonna, is gonna to mean that his, his first wave of attack hits armoured guys because he's all over the place, right? He's got a snake, he's got an opportunist, uh, he's got uh, the... Spark Pixie's attack, attacking your front card, and then he's got a slow living lava that may or may not hit anything. It's well armored up, but you're not attacking with, um, apart from your squid, you're not really attacking with melee, you're attacking with magic. Your melee cards are just keep, to keep things away. So I would give this to you as a, as a pretty solid, straightforward win. Um, yeah, once you, once you take down his living lava, um, everything else is just, you know, just falling at your feet, basically. Yeah. Geo? Yeah, so you got uh, defense or whatever it is, armor, and you got repair by that Scavo Wildling or uh, whatever he is. Yeah. And that literally stops, or at least stops for a little while, any of his attacks, ranged, melee. And yeah, I think it's a real good defense against him while you have magic as well as shields, uh, you know, to, yeah, to just slice through that. Uh, you got speed from Ashurinus, like, he, he's mental. Uh, he has ranged in third position. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'd yeah, so the rule here. set is ranged from any position. Oh, okay. oh right. Yeah, it's right yep. there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That. I just want you to disregard what I just said then. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you got a level four uh, summoner. You got a level four summoner, which means higher level monsters. Uh, he's really going... Bare bones, I think, here. Yeah. yeah. So with when I saw the rule set, I thought, okay, range from first position and trample. Um, I just I was expecting he's going to max... Because the fact that you can play range from first, <clears throat> um, that's you no... Know, nothing worse than towards the end of the game having your ranged card in first position. It's just, ah, oh, it's all over. Mm -hmm. So I anticipated that he would he would go melee and ranged. So that's why I put the shield repair there for my tank and, and then just, yeah, smash, smash <laughs> oh. <laughs> from the back. All right. Yeah. Let's see how this runs. And how good is Wavesmith far? Huh? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Especially summoned by Elric. I mean, <laughs> the damage output of those two cards is phenomenal. Yeah, five. Just Your squid there. might even take out his living lava. I oh, know. 
Yeah, Squid will take the next guy. Trust us, yeah. Yes. Yeah, ah. see, their attack is just spread out all over the shop. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're everywhere. Whereas you're just going forward, right? You just, I'm just going to hit their front guard, whatever it is. Mm. Nicely done. I yeah, call even, that I decisive. Mean, even had they taken out all your other cards, that O'Shannis has 11 health. It would have <laughs> mm -hmm. taken them so long to punch through <laughs> yeah. with the cards that they had there. Um, yeah, yeah. You could have just had, you know, three or four cards that do virtually nothing in the way and just him, just, you know, because mm. he's got that much life. So, yeah, yeah. nicely done. Um, okay, so the second game I chose, I chose for a totally different reason. And I'll show you why that is. Because of the um, battling in the brawls and doing the alpha and beta cards, uh, I pulled all my A's and B's off the market. And I honestly cannot remember the last time that I used dragons. I, I just can't. Um, and limited to odd numbers. <laughs> So it's half my deck gone already. So then with the 14 mana cap, there wasn't a lot of options. And this was just, I was just like, well, you can look at the cards I chose. I was like, just, this is something, this is not my mm. play. I just wanted to try something totally different. So what do you think? I think you've won. Yeah, um, yes, I I mean, he's not doing you any damage at all from his back row. Nope. Um, because Void is absorbing that one magic damage. Um, and his summoner isn't really helping him. It's, it's hurting you a little bit, but not much. I think mm -hmm. just the, the, the that full range damage uh, from your air elemental is going to just chip on through. Your, his Haunted Spirit will reduce your um, your head in a jar, but only by one per round. You don't have any healing. Uh, I don't anticipate him missing at all, but I'd, I'd say he's going to he's gonna chip away, but it, I think it'll take fewer than six rounds for four damage per round to hack through that Haunted Spirit, and then yeah. he can't get through your Lord Arianthus. He's just, there's nothing that can hurt it. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, I, he, I mean, worst case scenario, you get to... Um, actually, no, that wouldn't happen. I was going to say you do you, uh, get to fatigue, but he'll, you need to knock him off quick before he before he takes out your um, Lord Agapanthus there. Yeah. yeah, and we both went for the green booger, as you can see, which I, I thought that was interesting. Both trying to slow each other down. <laughs> green booger. I was looking for a green booger. I was like, oh, ooze. <laughs> um, so yeah, my my thinking was just like. Uh, and also wave with my um, Ellie there, just make it hard to hit in case he played a sneak. But uh, it was just, I was just trying something totally different. Just let's see how that actually goes. Yeah, just wrecking him. Mm -hmm. Bad. And that's, that's his ability to hurt you at all, entirely gone. Yeah. And it just yeah. one hit and his cards are gone. Yeah, tidy. That heavy hit off. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, if, if he had taken your head away, uh, yeah, he would have won. Yeah, if he but managed. That, that's why the head was there. So. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it was just zero, 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 zero. Bang, bang, bang for, for damage. <laughs> uh, what I had to do is get through the tank and then all, all his other cards were one hit cards. Oh, so, head, yeah. man. Yeah, that head. It's, yeah. it's but one. I mean, had things gone differently, I can see what he was trying to do there, right? Because he's thinking that you're going to maybe play a little bit defensive, a little bit aggressive, mm. maybe not have enough damage to cut through his haunted spirit you know, his haunted spirit is basically going to just repair and repair. Heal, yeah. While the damage from the spirit and that one magic damage around is just like, I mean, if you'd have had, say, uh, a setup where you had um, a card with a bit of armor and some repair behind him, then 
he wouldn't even need, you know, he, he would just be, well, th this is great because that repair isn't affecting me because the damage I'm doing with my, my single magic damage card up the back is getting the job done. And again, if he'd have gone with the hippo lady or something like that, then you would have been struggling because it's reduced that Slow. range damage by one. But mm -hmm. he, he anticipated that you'd go magic. And so he reduced magic damage by one and he, he guessed, guessed wrong. Yeah. Because I don't play range that often at all. And just with the limited options, I was like, okay. Because, you know, two, it's my Selena. She's, she's only level two. So it's the lowest level summon that I have. So it was a risk. Um, you know, it's like in a brawl, you might not take a risk like that because you know, you're thinking of the guild. But just for daily quests, it was just like, hey, let's let's, let's try this, and it paid off. Do it and see. Yeah. So, well, yeah. in one of my um, this this will be resolved in eight hours, so I'm not worried about saying it unless you you know stay up all night to edit and then post it, and then my opponent happens to see it. Seems a little bit strange, unlikely, but. In this alpha alpha only tournament, I've uh, put a um, just went Lyanna and then uh, the tree uh, it was the three mana tree. Uh, so healing one, yeah, and he he's yep. not even can't even fire from first position. The earth elemental, got, the tree, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. One yeah. thing is the two mana, yeah, uh, earth elemental, and then a spirit of the forest behind him. And the rule set doesn't suggest that's a good idea, but I think. The, the tree, even though he can't hit from there, he's not going to get damaged by thorns. He's not going to get damaged by retaliate, right? And he's got two heals, and it's only like a 14 mana game or something. But I think my Spirit of the Forest in, you know, behind him, just hit, 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 will do the job because the rule set doesn't suggest that that would even be remotely a good idea. I think it's like knockout or something like that. So, you know, you've got to give it a try, right? You just got to have a crack at it because mm -hmm. you never know. Maybe the counter to what they think you're going to play, they're really, you know, is, is really vulnerable to what you actually play. Yeah. So you've got to mix it up a bit and keep them on their toes. I'm second at the moment in this tournament. So oh, uh, good on you. Just, mm, yeah. It's the, it's the prize money for second. Yeah. 638 like SPS. I will take that. That is yeah. a handsome amount. Have you looked at... Uh, yourself do you know any tournaments i haven't i haven't yet because i don't want to unstake any sps at the mo at the moment at the moment it's not like a i mean i i guess i could un like not stake sps for a day or two and just like enter a tournament but for now i, I don't know i think i'm just going to ride out this airdrop phase and then i'll probably attempt it right now i'm quite happy with my daily rewards and yeah um, i'm pretty happy with that because you're kicking ass yeah. and taking some names i'm surprised you haven't sometimes looked... so, sometimes uh yeah it's worth, it's worth looking at like if you if you notice that a tournament's going to open or start you know at a time you're awake it's worth just jumping back in just before then set a reminder or something jump back in and have a look at the total number of entrants because if your entry fee gets paid back you know, uh, to, to the first 64 at a minimum, you know, places, and they've only got 70 people in the tournament. What are your odds that you're going to lose your money versus what are the odds that you're going to make some, right? Like, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, it, yeah. It's a no-brainer. So, yeah, jump in, have a crack, have a go at it. And look, tournaments are fun, especially when yeah. you're doing well and then you get the notification, okay, second round started now and we've left a lot of the dross behind it's particularly nice when you've been the dross yourself far too many times. We've left we've left the dross behind, and now we're moving on. The elite are stepping up to the big stage, the big arena yeah. for the big prize money. It's it's good. It's satisfying. It's yeah, as you were saying as well. The time, like sometimes the US time, oh, I just completely cannot wake up for it. Yeah, I'm, we I get smashed in Australia one. with time zones. Well, eh? each, I mean, each the thing is, each round of a tournament is twenty four hours, so it's kind oh. of like a guild brawl. So. Um, this tournament that I'm in now started at 7.30 this morning and mm. that's round one. Mm. So I have until 7.30 tomorrow morning to, to, to get round one team in. That okay. will resolve and then I'll have the whole of tomorrow from 7.30 tomorrow morning through to 7.30. Right. Uh, Friday, Saturday morning uh, to get it, you know, to get it all, uh, to get the second round entered. So it's like a guild brawl, right? You don't need okay. to be yeah. there at the time. There are 
There oh, are there aren't ones, aren't they? Yeah. But the standard the standard tournament, when you scroll down, ninety percent of them are when it starts, you've got a, a full twenty four hours to submit. So don't worry okay. too much about the time zone. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like with our first brawl. Well, we were all up at two o'clock in the was, morning. That, that or... was so funny. And I couldn't oh, convince you guys. Was. Like, yeah, but I need to be there. I need to I'm like go just chill. You're gonna get bored waiting for the next thing to happen. And yeah, it, it is kind of funny because then you you know you yeah, <laughs> and then at the end of it, it's like, oh, now it's the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the results stage, and it stays like that for like twelve hours before the next brawl yeah. even starts. It's, yeah, yeah, so it's much but more slow gu- paced. Than our guild uh, gil chat was just pumping it because you no know, Aussies, we're fifteen hours ahead of the rest of the world, um, um, and we're all on there talking because hey, it's our first time, and it's like, yeah, oh. I could, I've got 48 hours now to do this. <laughs> yeah, uh, I felt like a tool <laughs> after that. But that's how we learn, right? You threw your hat in the ring. Now you get it with Guild Brawls. If you yeah. do the same with tournaments, then you'll get it. Um, um, I think with tournaments, it is a great opportunity to specialize in something and go, right, I want to be the guy who enters the whatever tournament. And I do, I do, for me, it's Golden Diamond Alpha. Uh, just because I'm a I'm a slow old nag who takes a long time to get used to the things, and I've had three hours to get three years to get used to the alpha cards. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll use those. Um, yeah. But I I mean I finished I placed first in a diamond alpha tournament probably 18 months ago, and I'm still delighted at that because there are mm-hmm. some incredible players with the full set of alpha cards, um, and I'm I'm just like that's my that's my I'm okay at this game when the you know. When the moons, <laughs> the planets align, and everything's just right, I can uh, I can sink that you know that that long distance part. So yeah, very proud of that. Oh yeah. So I can you for like for example, uh, I mean you know I'm just a lowly gold league player here against the, in the company of you diamond players, but can yeah, you could bounce straight for a little more? That'd be great. <laughs> uh, can a diamond player? Um, like specialize in like a silver league or something like that, or do you have to be? Yeah, the, the entry fee is based on your current league. And if you want to enter a tournament that's substantially lower than your current league, you actually have to pay a higher entry fee to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, so you that's and I will both balance. look at the events. Yeah, so you and I will both look at the events screen and we'll scroll through. We'll see the same tournaments, but we'll see different entry figures. So if you want to enter a tournament that is substantially, uh, you know, outside of the range of the league that you're currently in in rank, then you're going to find that you've, you're facing a higher entry fee. That's good so thing. I'm not sure about the... I'm not sure if, if I paid more to get into this alpha tournament because it's gold league and I'm currently in diamond. It wouldn't be much. It's more that, you know, when you really start talking about a big gap. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with your experience and knowledge there, Matt, if, if Geo was to enter a tournament or if I was to enter a tournament, what what tournaments that are available would you sort of tailor for us which which ones do you think we would each be better at well i mean there's always the option of starting your own tournament which is its own interesting and fun idea you can set the background for it um and so anyone streaming on twitch youtube whatever there's your branding right there Mm. uh and it's you're also obviously naming rights all the images um I think the possibilities for outside money to enter the game are coming in through tournaments, uh, different crypto projects, and then eventually just projects. Uh, I, I'd love to see the tourism commission say, "Hey, we're going to you know advertise by, you know, doing tournaments to come and visit the Barossa or come and visit, you know, uh, if you guys had anywhere nice in Victoria, I it would have sprung to mind right now, but it, it's, I'm just blanking." Uh, <laughs> Um, look, I, I think it's more important that you pick a direction and just go in it rather than saying what you're good, you know, what you're good at right now. Um, like I say, I, I will just scroll down through the list of events and just pick a, whatever has the big A and nothing else. And then I'll go with that. But a silver, let's have a look at the silver A game here. Uh, it's only five SPS for me to enter the silver A game. I wonder if that's, yeah, so that's, I think, I've, yeah, so as long as you come in the first top 64, you're going to make your money back. And there's only 32 entered. So that's a guaranteed money back. 
you could make up to sort of 205 for first to fourth place uh, SPS. So that's good. Um, but if you're only a newcomer like Geo, uh, I would say look at the uh, maybe the Chaos Legion only ones mm-hmm. and pick a you know pick where you where you want to be right. Where's where's your where's your spot? Is that dice and CL uh, noob modern all the pointy things? So that would cost me sixty SPS to go in that noob tournament, and that's I'm assuming that's not the same price that others see. That would be more. And it's four hundred deck to go it's into the noob. It's sixty for me too. Sixty for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty okay. SPS. Yeah. And it's so gold. your diamond as well, Geo. <laughs> gold league. Yeah, but he's ah uh, oh, yeah okay. Okay, so yeah, you're both yeah. diamond, so it'd be the same price. Yeah. No, but he's I, champion when he gets there. Yeah. Yeah? That's how yeah. it works, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, we're all champions. It's just, you know, getting, getting the recognition for, for being a champion. <laughs> just, just takes Matt. a little bit longer for some of us. Um, if, if, <laughs> if we're champions, Matt must be a bloody, like... I don't know. He, he must be in heaven. He must be, you know. I think we've, I think we've pretty clearly leader. established that I'm I'm definitely one of the greatest gentlemen to ever to ever walk the earth. He uh, is the supreme leader. <laughs> this, I'm, that's I'm, I think not I'm in on dispute. The cusp hovering, I think just sort of hovering just above the earth at this point. <laughs> you know, toenails dragging along the ground. It's very scary. Uh, Look, there's so much chaos legion stuff going on. I'd right. say that's going to be your um your, your best way to. To, to maximize any sort of return but there's a look they're, they're revamping tournaments at the moment so it'll, it'll no doubt look different in a month yeah um but i'd say pick your niche and then just get good in that niche um yeah. for me it's alpha uh, <clears throat> but it's it's a nice little tweak right it's an extra bonus where you can win some serious money and you know if you want to then stake that sps and watch your little your staking numbers turn over faster that is very satisfying yeah, would be Geo, this, this is your calling. This is your calling. Tournament King. Yeah, oh, calling out. yeah in time, in time. Yeah. These are, these oh, are my requests, right? I want Gladius cases from both of you guys. We'll, all three of us will open a, uh, open a Gladius case on the, uh, together. Yeah. Might be the next stream, I don't think. Might probably the one after. And uh, I want to see how Geo went in a Chaos Legion tournament. All Roll right. Diamond. I'll go to one. Okay, so I, I won't stake the next drop. Um, I'll just use that whatever it costs to enter a tournament that I want to enter, and then then I'll stake the rest after that's been entered. And yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. All right. So that'll be some you know some news for next episode as well. And uh, speaking of the next after. episode, we've got one minute left, so time's just flown. Uh, next week, special guest on the show. Don't forget. Every viewer that comments, if your comment generates the most interest, you can win 10% of the post rewards. Um, and that, yeah, that's, we probably don't even have time for closing comments. If anyone's wondering what's going on, we're on a Zoom timer, so that's that's why the end here. So, um, yeah, please comment, like, share, and that sort of